recently we completed a royalty evaluation, so I wanted to show you some of the steps we go through to evaluate royalties. Uh, so what it was is a royalty acquisition in the Eagle for Shale area, it producing and wells and then future development and the client was the buyer. All right, so the professionals on the project, I was the lead engineer, I did most of the work, but I had other engineers and technicians helping me to do the work. All right, so the, what the situation is, here's a land map with the existing Eagerford wells in the blue uh, rectangles. The yellow rectangles are the seller's royalty interest tracks. So some of the tracks are generating revenue from the producing wells, but some are outside the existing wells and they're not producing revenue right now. The red tracks are my estimate of where future units would be uh, established that would drill and contribute to the uh, seller's interest. All right, so the first thing we do to start evaluation is we have to evaluate the producing wells. So we build a PhD wind database with each well's production from drilling info. That's the public data. We use public data. We, add, we have to add the ownership interest to each well that the seller gives us or we get from the check stubs. We create a price schedule with historic data for the oil and gas prices and, a future, and futures prices at the end. And we use NYMEX most of the time. We apply that to all the producing wells. We have to analyze the check stubs and get the price differentials for the oil and gas and the, and, a, and the gas shrinkage and NGL yields. We apply all that to all the wells. And then we have to do a decline curve projection on each well. But uh, before we get finished with the PDP, we have to analyze the check stub data to determine what the revenue the seller is getting. Is he getting 30000 a month or what? Uh, and then we do a backdated PhD run cash flow using our database to see if our database will match the actual data, the historical data. So if it doesn't, that means we might have a well missing or we got the wrong, wrong ownership on a well. So we can fix that up and get this matching. Then we're confident that when we do our reserve projections on the PDP, it's, it's good. All right, the second thing we have to do is the non-producing evaluation. There'll be a lot of wells that are currently drilling or they're not completed yet or they're permitted and they're going to start drilling quickly. Also, there may be new wells that aren't production recently, but they're not in pay status yet. The, the, the royalty owner is not getting his checks yet. So we have to estimate all that and put that in the cash flow and reserve estimates. But we have to know that expected or estimated ownership of each of these new wells that are coming on. Usually the seller can give us some information on that or we can use the unit size and the track size and the royalty on the track. But we can research spud dates, you know, historical spud dates, how long it takes to complete because we have to estimate the date, the initial production date of all these new wells that have come on so we can project their reserves and cash flow. But for each, each of these new wells, we have no history yet so we have to use a type curve and we'll talk about type curves later. Okay, the big part of the evaluation is the development drilling uh, where we have to estimate the PUD, probable, and possible future location. So we have to look at all the tracks. We have to lay out where wells could be, uh, the spacing, and how many wells could be drilled. So we have to estimate the future amount of wells that can be drilled that will contribute to this seller's acreage. Now to do that, we research the operator's public reports. They talk about what activity they're going to have next year, or they're going to drill 10 wells, or the, you know, the wells are getting better, and their completions are getting better. You know, how good are the, what, the existing wells? What are their, what's their current spacing? So we can you know, use that when we lay out the future wells. But we have to estimate the number of proved locations that will be drilled. That's our high probability. And the probable number of probable locations and possible. But, we, but next, we have to evaluate the drilling pace. Are they going to drill 10 wells a year or 20 wells a year? So we look at historical activity, like where 20 wells came on last year, 30 came on the year before so we can help estimate in the future. Now, when we estimate how many wells are gonna get drilled, we might say it's proved based on track record that 20 get drilled, but probably if they move more rigs in, you know, we heard that, it might go to 30, and possibly they might drill 35 if they get it going better. So we might put a range of drilling pace. All right, so for each well that we wanna drill, we have to come up with a type curve we got to consider the vintage of the existing wells, their lateral length, completion design, that sort of thing, and we make a, a, a normalized curve. So like this curve is 200 Eagleford wells in this area. So the, the historical data is here, and then we fit a curve through it, uh, EUR of 300. So that's what we're going to apply to all these drilling locations. But a big part of it is we have to estimate the ownership interest for these future wells. So we can look at the unit size, the track size, that sort of, sort of thing to get an estimate. And uh, 
then we have to schedule all this drilling into the economic software to start generating reserves. All right, so when we get all that uh, uh, built, we can start generating reserves. Here's a reserve report as of 1120. We got the all reserves, gas, MBOEs, for each category of reserves. And we can put a risk factor on them if we like. You know, the, we might risk the uh, lower categories a little more, but we can, uh, we can get a reserve and a risk reserve number. And we tell the client that these category, reserve categories are for information only because this is to quantify the risk because they're not the operator. They have no control on this, so technically we can't put it as proved undeveloped. All right, so how do we come up with a value? The way we do is we use a discounted cash flow analysis. So with the reserve projections, we generate discounted cash flows. Here's all the numbers. This is net present value in thousands as of January 1st. So we have different discount rates from PV5 all the way to PV50. And we put the uh, cash flows from each category in this chart. So the client gets all these numbers. But what we say is, well, for the producing wells, we think you could pay PV 377,000, which is PV 10, but maybe for the PUD, you only pay PV 20, probably impossible. And that's kind of risking it because there's some uncertainty on the drilling and all that, so we can put a risk. But if you add all these greens up, you get $2.1 million, so that's our recommended purchase price. And we have the risk reserve, so you can look at, if you pay 2.1, that's about $21 a barrel. If we know what the net royalty acres are, we can say, well, that's $4,200 per acre. So. Anyway, uh, the client sometimes just wants to use cash flow multiples or production multiples in his bid, but if he wants a discounted cash flow method to back up this bid, this is how we do it. This is how we get the numbers. And you can run this at different prices and diff different drilling paces if you want. But anyway, that's how we do it. Let me know what you think.